Well, this is a gynecological study of a female with a history of severe pain in the region of the pelvis, in which we see this is the longitudinal section of the uterus measuring 7.7 into 3.8 centimeter. The dimensions are within normal limits. This is the endometrial canal, and the endometrial canal measures 7.8 is not dilated up to 14 is considered to be normal. And uh, here you see that uh, this is the anterior myometrium, posterior myometrium, the cervix. This is the uterus. This is the fluid, okay, surrounding the anterior wall. And this is the fluid in the pelvic cavity. And this, this, this is fluid. This is fluid. Now, note the outer margin of the uterus. You see, this is the outer margin is irregular and blurred. It's not sharp and uh, the outer line is not visualized at the frontal region. Now these are bowel gases. So this is the longitudinal section of the uterus with no myometrial mass, uh, normal size endometrial canal in proliferative phase with fluid in the pelvic cavity. This is the fluid in the pelvic cavity with every and small fluid in the peritoneal cavity, dependent region, peritoneal cavity with bowel. Okay, now you can see the amount of fluid. See the outer surface of the uterus. From this angle, it appears to be okay, but from here, the outer surface appears to be irregular and not that uh, sharp, thin, as we see in normal cases. This is the transfer section of the uterus. Now in transfer section, you will feel some difference. What is the difference? The difference is that <coughs> this is the uterus in transfer section. And this is the endometrial canal. Now here the dimension of the endometrial canal will be different. 13.4, almost with a normal, but in late secretory phase. There is a cystic area, uh, there is a complex, rather I will not say complex, there is a solid ecogenic area, this one. This is the solid ecogenic area. With fluid around it, anterior surface. And this is the endometrial canal, this is the anterior myometrium. Now why do we see the posterior wall acoustic enhancement is because of the fact that this cystic area is not that solid, moreover it is being surrounded by the fluid, so the waves when they tra travel through this uh, uh, solid appearing ecogenic area, they pass through uh, in an, uh, with, a, with an intensity and frequency that uh, the posterior wall gives the acoustic enhancement because they return back to the probe with the, the speed with which they strike this area. So this is in fact a cystic area full of internal echoes measuring 4.6 into 4.2 centimeters with anterior uh, and posterior wall fluid at its anterior as well as the posterior wall and the reason for the uh, acoustic enhancement. So this is not a solid mass, in fact this is a cystic area and that is filled with different strength internal echoes and fluid around the reason for the acoustic enhancement. So, in this uh, view, 
we see that there is a, definitely a complex mass in the region of the right at Nexa. This, this is the right at Nexa, and uh, this is the uterus. This is the endometrial canal in transfer section. Well, this is fluid again. This is fluid surrounding the uh, uterus in transfer section and this uh, cystic area. And this uh, cystic area full of uh, echoes. This is fluid in the peritoneal cavity. There is no calcification seen within this uh, mass. Now this is the mass under consideration. Now I am focusing only the cystic area or uh, yeah, the cystic area under study. Why do we see uh, Posterior wall acoustic enhancement will be quite clear to you now. I am down again. So, this pathology needs less correlation. It can be an ectopic rupture, pregnancy, ectopic pregnancy, it can be an infected uh, uh, this. this Cystic area can be a Morrison's, uh, sorry, Morgagni's cyst, or it can be an infected tumor ovarian cystic mass, it can be a ruptured ovarian cyst. So, we, without, I, as I don't have any uh, uh, differentials with me, so I will suffice with these differentials. Thank you very much.